are we? Right after your Bible, open to the book of Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, and then we'll read three openings this morning. Actually, normally it takes me one hour to explain one opening, two hours to do two openings, and three hours to do three openings. So today that we're doing three openings, it's going to be three hours sermon. Right? If you no, don't have to add your face that way. I'm only joking. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Matthew chapter 2, we read verses 12 to 14, then we'll skip and go to 19, and then we'll read 19 um, to 22, and then we'll read Romans chapter 8, and then verse 14. We just want to compare scriptures with scriptures even this morning. Are you there? All right, Matthew chapter 2, verses 12 to 14, the Bible says, Then being warned in a dream uh, that they should not return to Herod, uh, this was speaking of the father even of, 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 of the parents of the child Jesus. Uh, the Bible says, talking about Mary and Joseph, the Bible says they departed for their own country. No, sorry. These are the Magis, right? They departed for their own country another way. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, Arise, take the young child. How did they appear to him? How did they appear to him? Did he speak to him? He said, saying, right? So there was a word there. He said, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, uh, and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will, see, Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Verse 14 says, When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed even for Egypt. Continue, and let's go to 19 and then to 22. The Bible says, Now when Herod was dead, he was dead, but Joseph did not know. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise. Take the young child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother and came to the land of Israel. Verse 22 says, But when he heard that Achilles was reigning over Judea instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And again, look at that. Being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. Romans chapter 8, very quickly Go to Romans, the book of Paul. It's actually that book of Romans is called the ABC of the Christian faith. Uh, you've got to learn and to read, you've got to learn all the instructions in that book. It will do you good. Romans chapter 8 and then verse 14. Are you there? Are you there? For as many, look at your neighbor and say, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's like a memory verse, actually, right? So look at your neighbor and um, help me preach that sermon to your neighbor without an honorarium. So look at the neighbor, high ball to high ball, and say, as many, as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Today, for a few minutes, I'm going to be teaching on the power of divine instruction. Father, thank you. Because the entrance of the word, you give light, give understanding unto us this morning. As simple folks, we've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. Daddy and I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. Let the purpose for sending your word be fulfilled. After now, Lord, we will walk according to your counsel. And walk in the reality of one of divine instructions. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can have your seat even in God's presence. Hallelujah. Um, what am I teaching on this morning? I can't hear you. All right. Uh, anybody believe that this place is too cold this morning? It's too cold this morning. Um, so we have permission to just off one, right? All right. Glory to God. All right. So let's um, then go into God's word together. Right, how many of us want to live in Canada? Praise God. You want to live in Canada? All right, you don't want to go to Canada. Okay. I was going to talk about the cold and link it with Canada, right? But since you don't want to go, so there's no need to actually just link that up. Right, we're speaking on the power of divine instruction. Safety is in the leading of God. Can I say that to somebody again? That safety is in the leading of God. If you are not divinely instructed and guided by God, then you are not safe. I, I, I mean, the Bible made it clear that the Holy Spirit speaks. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, 
The Bible says the Spirit speaks and it speaks expressly. That word expressly there means it speaks clearly, it speaks surely, and it speaks with no ambiguity. When the Holy Spirit speaks, it is clear. When the Holy Spirit speaks, it is expressly, explicitly. You know this is what he's saying. Let me say this to you that every destiny will be attacked. Um, when I say attacked, it's not necessarily by devils or demons. It can also be by systems. Uh, it can also be by the people around you. It can also be even by the enemies of your sources. Herod was going to kill the child Jesus. Without divine instruction, the child Jesus would have died. Without divine instruction. I'm talking about the power of divine instruction. If Joseph was not listening, if Joseph were not somebody who had God, the child Jesus would have died. The child Jesus, though he had a vision to live for, though he was very instrumental, God sent him for a purpose, uh, he still had to be kept by instructions from God. And that's very powerful. You have vision you are living for, you have a desire, you have a dream. But one of the things that will keep that desire and that dream alive uh, is to be led by God. Is to be led by God. The Bible says in Hebrews, uh, the, Hebrews 1, uh, the Bible says, God who has sundry times has spoken to our fathers, uh, as in these days has spoken to us, uh, has spoken to our fathers by the prophet, as in these days spoken to us by his son. Uh, that was speaking of the time Jesus had come and Jesus was there. But today he speaks to us via the instrumentations uh, of his spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, who is called the Spirit of Christ. Uh, so he leads us by his spirit. Why? Because Jesus said, I would go. And the comforter would come. He who is the spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. Every of your life decisions must be guided by the spirit of truth. Who is the person of the Holy Spirit. Can I say to somebody today that you are as safe as your level of divine guidance. You are as safe as your level of divine guidance. You are saved as your level of divine guidance. That means to the extent of which you follow God. That's the extent of which you are saved. I want to start by giving you certain practical examples uh, even this morning. A man who was meant to travel for a journey uh, and the Lord told him, he had the Lord say, don't go for that journey. Everything looks okay. It seems he should travel for that journey and he did not go on that journey and you know what happened? Everybody that entered that car had an accident and died uh, and he was preserved. Now you could say grace saved him, uh, but yes, grace walking with divine instruction. The ability to hear. Uh, I, I love the testimony she gave uh, that um, she didn't have money. That's why she did not enter that car, right? So all things work together for good, even your lack of money. Can you see that? And that's why she did not enter a car that could have led to a lot of crying. Glory be to God. And that's God's mercy speaking for you. Now, God told someone that I know, leave the ministry you are in right now and go to another ministry, start a ministry work for me. And the man who refused that, uh, Years later, the man lost his life and lost, first lost his ministry and lost his life. Why? Because he did not listen to God. Can I say to you that the devil does not have any power over the believer who is guided appropriately by God? If you will listen to the Holy Spirit, sir, he will guide you via his method and the devil will not be able to have any power over you. Can I say to somebody... Uh, I, I'll give you another example. God asked a young man uh, um, to leave, to go call a man. And, and he called that man, and the man said, you know, he was praying. And the Lord showed him that man that he was seated with that man. And the Lord said to him afterwards, he said, what is the meaning of this? He said, call that man, go and see him. And he visited that man, and that man gave him a contract. And the job he's doing today, started a business because he was divinely led of God. Divinely led of God. There is so much power in divine guidance. The only underlining things in the scenarios I've given you was the leading of God. The leading of God. And that's very key. Matthew 13, 16. The Bible says, blessed are your eyes for the see, your ears for the hear. Matthew 13, 16. It said, blessed are your eyes for the see, your ears for the hear. The Bible says in Proverbs 20, verse 12, it said, the hearing here and the seeing high, the Lord made them both. That means there is an eye that sees. There is the hearing ear. He didn't say the hearing ears. He said the hearing hair. So he's not talking about your physical ears. He's talking about your inner ear. There is an ear that hears when the spirit speaks. It's not this ear. 
It's not the one you are using now. Do you know that there's a way you speak to yourself and then you hear yourself again? That's the inner hair. The Bible says the hearing hair and the seeing heart, the Lord made them both. The Bible says in Isaiah 30 verse 21, it says you will hear a voice saying to you, when you walk to, when you turn to the right or to the left, this is the way, walk in it. When it comes to divine guidance, there is a certainty. You know this is what to do, this is what I have to do, this is what I need to do. Why? Because the Lord leads you. Today my job is very cut out for me. I don't want to teach you something that is not practical. I don't just want to speak academic or ministerial thing to you. I want to tell you something that is workable, practical, and something you can work with. Let me say this to somebody in, under the sound of my voice. It is wisdom to be guided by God. It is wisdom to be guided by God. It is wisdom to be guided by God. I want to speak to you on the power of divine instruction, and I want to really make this sermon very short if I can. I want to quickly highlight before you and to you some of the principles of divine instruction, some of the benefits of divine instruction. Number one, divine instruction will preserve you. Divine instruction will preserve you. Wisdom will preserve you. The Bible says something, and I've always loved Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and then verse 12. The Bible says wisdom is a defense. I don't know whether you have seen that scripture before. Ecclesiastes 7, 12. The Bible says wisdom is a defense, as money is also a defense. So if anybody tells you money is not okay, right? Just tell him that scripture says that wisdom is a defense, as money is also a defense. But the Bible says, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those that have it. Money may not be able to give you life. But wisdom gives life to those that have it. In fact, money can kill you. The way you spend money can actually cost your own death. You, you can lose your health because it is not life-giving, but wisdom is life-giving. Can you see that? I, I love that translation in the New Living Translation. The Bible says wisdom and money can get you almost anything. Wisdom and money can get you almost anything. But only wisdom can save your life. Can you see that? Only wisdom can save your life. Wisdom is a shelter, as money is also a shelter, the New International Version says. But the advantage of knowledge is this. Wisdom preserves those who have it. Many people have lost their lives because of lack of wisdom in this area. In 2 Kings chapter 6, I said divine guidance will preserve you. In 2 Kings chapter 6, when you begin to read from verses 8 to 12, we find the beautiful story of God preserving Israel. Uh, the, the Syrian army was against them. And there was a prophet of God in that land called Elisha. And Elisha was telling the king where he should not go. Why? Because in that portion of scriptures, whenever the Syrian armies are in a place, Elisha will send a word. I said, don't go there. They are there now. They are there now. And another time, they are in another place, he tells them, so that the king of the Assyrian had to call his own army and say, who is the spy amongst us? They said, there is no spy. It is Elisha, that prophet, that even tells the king of Israel what happens in your room. Whatever happens in your bedchamber, this guy knows. Why? He was able to preserve Israel. Why? Because of divine guidance. Divine guidance is to preserve your life. It will preserve your destiny. I remember a while back, I was in church and a couple came to me and you will know it's not this church by the story I would say because nobody has been pregnant in this church, right? Glory be to God. We have not gotten to that level yet. We're still waiting and praying on them. Amen. Glory to God. All right, so this young person, couple, uh, it was a second baby. She was pregnant for the second baby. And uh, I'd, I'd known them. I'd been like a pastor, a voice in that life. And she came to me. I, I saw them and I just looked at her. And I said to her, I said, this baby, how many, how many months now? She said, four months old. In the womb, I said, beautiful. And then I looked at her. And then I said, whenever it is time to deliver, deliver via CS. And she looked at me. Now, if you know me, I'm a faith preacher. And I've always said, I know natural birth would declare it. You are a Hebrew woman. Glory be to God. <laughs> and then so I was saying something that was contrary. I said, deliver via CS. Fast forward four months later, they are seeing the doctor, and the doctor said there was nothing, no problem with them, that they could deliver via natural way, that there's no need to do CS, because they've done the scan, they've run everything, and everything seems okay. And so a senior pastor called me, 
and said, this person I before me, but they said there was a word you released to them and said they should do CS. Uh, they said, but the doctor said all of this. And I said to them, I said, truth is that I can't even remember I said it. But if they said I said it, then I must have said it. And they said, but this is what, I said, then let's pray. And the husband was, because the first child was very serious, so the husband was very, no, it's natural birth, uh, glory be to God, they confess scriptures, uh, all things are working for our good, amen, uh, oh, you have got the strength. And they said all of that, so I looked like the only contrary, so I told them. I said, God's mercy will speak. Whenever you get there, just do natural, since the doctor also said, you can do natural. Now, nine months, the time of delivery came. And the wife suddenly just said, I am going to follow what Pastor Sawyer said. I am not doing it again. I want to do CS. And so the husband decided, since I'm not the one going there, I'm not the one, so let's do what she wanted. Now, when they got there, and they were going to deliver the baby, they did the CS, and they discovered that the baby had actually put your black claw around it, her neck. So if he had, she had pushed the baby would have died. Now, how could I have seen that? I didn't see anything. And I would be lying to say, I saw that guy's and a blood alcohol. No, I didn't see anything. All I knew was that don't do it. So it was the doctor herself, because the number was a member of our church, that called. He wasn't there. They called. He said, Pastor, do you know what just happened? The power of divine instruction. Sometimes it will not make sense. Sometimes it will look contrary. But you see, it will preserve your life. Certain times God will tell you not to travel. And you look at your tires, you look at the oil, you look at everything, and it seems so good that you should be on that journey. Yet God will say, don't go. Why? Because it will preserve you. Number two, what is the power of divine instruction? It will guide and protect you. Divine instruction will guide and protect you. The voice of the Lord will guide and protect you against all evil. It is the God that is close, not the God that is far. The God that is interested in your fear, it is wisdom to let the voice of God guide and protect you. Bible says in 16, 13, the book of John, Jesus was speaking. He said the spirit of truth has come and he is guiding me. He said when the spirit of truth is come, he said it will guide you into all truth. So one of the fundamental work of the Holy Ghost is to guide you. You are too limited in knowledge, in scope, in wisdom to make all your decisions by yourself and that's why God has given you an helper. His name is the Holy Spirit. It's within you. It's in you. It's called the indwelling spirit. That's one of the miracles of what Jesus brought to us. Before Jesus came, the Holy Spirit only came upon them. But right now, the Spirit now dwells inside of you. Why? Because of Jesus. Listen, you can live appropriately by listening to the Holy Ghost. I'm guided of the Lord. You see, I want to show you something in Psalm 23, verses 1 to 4. Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. Can you finish it? Come on now. Continue. Why are you people going down? You know when people start some verses, they start and then, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me. Can you see that? What does he do? He therefore means that if he does not lead you, there's no guarantee of the result you want. The Bible says, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Now listen to verse 4. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Listen, it is not that there are no evil or there are nothing to arm the believer. But because the believer is led of the Lord. Bible says, I will therefore fear no evil. Because I'm led of him, I will fear no evil. The reason people are afraid is because they are not led of the Lord. It is important you are led of him so that you will not be afraid. He said, for you are with me. Look at that comforting word. He said, for you are with me. Your Lord and your staff they comfort me. When a shepherd leads his sheep, he leads with a rod and with a staff. The essence is to guide. The essence is to guide. The Lord will lead you beside still waters. The Lord will determine your starts and your stops. That's the work of God. Move now. Don't move now. If you listen to the Holy Spirit, there are decisions you will make that you will not regret. 
You may not understand it, but it is for your preservation. You know, we live in Africa. And one of the things about Africa is that there are works of devils. People are demonic, right? Uh, people are demonic, but like I've always maintained to you in this church, you should never be afraid of devils or demons, right? But it doesn't mean they are not demonic. Uh, uh, so so, so uh, after I finished my training, the house I first of all took uh, was a house in Tanke, Ilori. Those who know Ilori will know Tanke, and some people actually know this house that I stayed in. I, it was my first house. And I remember I entered into that house. It's a bungalow. I was the only one in that flat. The flat before, beside me was for the landlord and the guy, and his family stayed in Kaduna, so I was the only one in that compound. Right? And I, one thing that was very important, there was a coconut tree inside that house. And as I entered that house, the Lord said to me, don't eat of this coconut tree. I'm like, with we just entered house. What is coconut and me now? Don't eat of this coconut tree. Now, background story, the person who left that house, um, who was a church member that passed on to me, his wife was sick now unto death. In fact, she eventually died, and she died of cancer. Now, I was in that house. In fact, the man did not want me to take that house because he believed that that house was demonic. But I, those days, until now, I love things when they say they are demonic. Glory be to God. Uh, because I, I just think that this is just a waste of time. Do you understand that? Because I, the power I like, carry, it's not, it's not comparable to what they carry. It's not, I cannot be running from witches. It's, it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible way to live. I can't know Jesus and be running from witches. So when they said that, I said, well, I would take the house because the house was cheap. And glory be to God. <laughs> I didn't have so much money. So it's either I go and look for the one in GRA that you say there's no demon. No, I stay here where demons are. One of us, we pack for one another. Glory be to God. And I stayed in that house. And listen to this. December, that was after six months, the, the wife came from Cardinal. And the wife looked at me. So coconut will drop from the ground and then be on the ground. And then students come to visit me and then I, I take it. Say, go, go and eat it. I give them the coconuts. I don't even ask some of them. They will just carry four and go because that coconut tree was very fruitful. I didn't feel like I shouldn't give people. I felt like I shouldn't eat it. Now the woman came. And the woman said, ah, pastor, how are you? I said, I'm fine, man. See, uh, they told me you are the one who is in this. I said, yes. See, this coconut tree. I said, yes, yes. I said, I said, I don't eat it. Me and my big mouth. I said, I don't eat it. I said, I give it out. He said, no. It is people in this house that are supposed to be eating the coconut tree. Ah. Uh, no, I don't understand that. How can, is it for people in this house? <laughs> I, 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 and you know the funny thing was that that was the last time the woman greeted me. That was the last time I saw her on that visit. Uh, so people are wicked, right? But the Lord will guide you. The Lord will keep you. I, I, I didn't have cancer in my life. You see, there, there, there are things people send because people are just wicked. But the Lord will keep you. There will be flights you will miss because the Lord will keep you. It's not that that flight will probably just go down. But the Lord knows that by you missing that appointment, you are going to miss another one that is set for you. And therefore, it is important to be divinely guided of God. Number three, what, what am I trying to say? Um, it will increase you. Divine guidance will increase you. Power of divine instruction, it will increase you. No man will ever experience true increase except he can design the voice of God. God is a God that is close. He increases us with guidance. Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, huh? and then he will straighten your path. Your path may seem crooked, but the Bible says it will straighten your path. It will straighten your path. The Lord increases you and moves you to the path of increase. Most times, stagnation is as a result of spiritual deafness. Can I say that to somebody again? Most times, stagnation is as a result of spiritual deafness. Increase will come. Via obedience to his word. I found it in scriptures. Anytime God wants to increase his people, he sends his word. He sent his word. Anytime he wants them to do something different, he sent his word. The Bible says Israel were going to the promised land. Scripture says they got to a place, they were complaining, they were stuck for 40 years. The word of the Lord came in Deuteronomy chapter 2 and then verse 3. The Bible says God spoke to them and said, it is time to go ye northward. God's word came and they began to move forward. God's word came. And they began to move forward. Without the word of God, moving forward may be difficult. 
Look at this ministry. Thank God for where we are today. The Lord said, move to the island. I did not, even if I was going to come to Lagos, I should be a Yaba. It's easier and simpler there. Why am I coping with people who don't like to go to church? Island people don't like to go to church. I think you know that. Because they found freedom from their parents and they don't just want to do things their own way. They just want to do things their own way. Yaba is simpler. Yaba is easier. Or let me go to Ikorodu. I mean, it's how much is a haul? You see, I, I, I could think about things that way. But you see, it's except you are where God wants you to be. Fruitfulness will not locate you there. Most times when we are led by God, we are led to the place of promotion and increase. Things that does not make sense. The Lord will increase you via his word. Number four, it will keep you in the will of God. Divine instruction will keep you in the will of God. If you sincerely want to do the will of God and remain in it, then you need divine guidance. It is wisdom to stay in the will of God. And God's will is revealed via his word. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17, do not be unwise, understand what the will of God is. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9, say you'll be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. There is the knowledge of God's will. And God's will is revealed when we are led of him. Epaphras, who was one of the Christians at Colossae, Paul was testifying concerning him. If, uh, Colossians 4 verse 12, he said, Epaphras, who is one of you, always praying for you that you will be stand complete and perfect in all the will of God. You will stand complete and perfect in all the will of God. In the will of God is your safety. In the will of God is your safety. And the word of the Lord is how the will of God is revealed. It will guide you with his loving heart. It will guide you with his voice. So before you make a decision, would you ask God, what do you say? When we talk about the will of God, we are first, I mean, when people talk about the will of God, you know, first thing they acknowledge is that God, has a, God speaks. It's because he speaks that you can know his will. It's because he has a voice. That's why you can know his will. God's word is his staff in steering our life. Before you marry that girl, what is God's will? Somebody said there's no, I mean, I, I, I preach it also, that there's no just one will of God, like some people preach it. Like there's only one woman for you. There's only one man for you. That thing does not have anything in, as, in truth. Nothing in truth, Right? But listen to this, even though there is no one will of God for you, every relationship has a will. God has a will concerning every relationship. Do you get the difference? God has a will concerning every relationship so that every relationship cannot turn to marriage. <laughs> some are just friendship. Why some are for marriage? But there is no one woman that if that woman had died when she was young, that's why maybe you have not gotten married. That's why you have 40-something now. That woman died. So some things people preach that is against the character of a loving God. I mean, some people now blend revelation where there is none. And you hear them, you will know that this is blended. They will be saying there is a perfect will of God. And when you miss out on that perfect will, then it will give you the good. When you miss out on the good, then you take the acceptable. How can that scripture so that you can do the good, perfect good and acceptable will of God be turned to marriage? In that context, there's nothing about relationship. It's one will of God that is good that is perfect and that is acceptable. One will of God. There are no levels that I miss out on Sunday. Oh, Kashi Lavovia. I have only two chances now. I'll get good. So if you miss out on the good one, bah, 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 that's acceptable one. Like God just dash you something. How we come about some of these doctrines, I don't understand them. But do you get what I'm trying to say? Any step outside of God's will is an invitation to agony. Any step out of God's will. Jesus lived a life. He said, when they told him that uh, uh, Herod was looking for him, he said, go tell that fox. Today I cast out devils. You see, he was saying, I am a man on a mission. I'm walking in tandem with the will of God. There is God's will and desire for every life. Every morning, every day you wake up, there is a desire of God for every day. You must have a heart that wants to do the will of God. Why? Because in the divine instruction is your safety. Number four, if it means the Lord is going ahead of you. That's the power. The power of divine instruction is there is a guarantee that God is going ahead of you. 
It is wisdom to have God go before you. Therefore, every obstacle or fetters of iron, anything by the wicked, is removed. Because being in God's will means God is going with us and is before you and is ahead of you. Isaiah, 50, 40, Isaiah 45 verse 2. The Bible says, I will go before you and will level the mountain. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. And the Lord he is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be as dismayed. Can you see that? He says he's the one who goes before you. He says he will be with you. Emmanuel is not the name of a church. It's the reality of who God is to the believer. I am with you. I will never leave nor forsake you. It's a guarantee. You may look around you and find no friend, find no brother, but Jesus is with you. He's with, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the party. He's there. He's there. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. He said, I will guide you with my eye. Psalm 32 verse 8. I will guide you with my heart. There is a koinonia and intimacy you have with God that at certain times you can sense that God is not happy with you. Not because you are going to go to hell. <laughs> when I say God's not happy, I need to. It's not because you are going to go to hell. But you know that this relationship can get better. This fellowship can get better. This fellowship can get better. I love when she was testifying and say, God has to tell me I don't have to use multitude of words. I just say it's more now. Just, and he hears me. You know what has happened to that relationship? It has gotten better. It has gotten better. Our work with God can get better. It can get better. It's not that God does not love you where you are. He loves you where you are. But he wants intimacy. He wants you closer. He wants you to understand him more. He wants you to get to a better work with him. And number six, what will he do to you? It will guarantee your hand the fulfillment of your purpose. You see, purpose is something that is paramount in the mind of God. It's why he created us. It's why we are here. But you can't get to that thing, that place called there without the divine leadings of God. He will lead you. Divine guidance will guarantee your hand. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the thought that I think towards you, see, at the Lord. See, they are thought of good, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. When you follow the leading of God, you will get to the exact place he wants you to get to. Exact place. God's guiding voice is the map that will take you to your vision. When the Lord said this to me, I love it. He said, my voice, my guiding voice is the map that will take you to your vision. It's the map that will take you to your vision. There is no better or surer guide of our vision than the giver of it. Than the giver of it. Listen to this. It has taken God's voice to take me to wherever I am today. God's voice. Everyday leadings. I'm not saying he led me once. No. Everyday leadings. Every day. Every day. Listen to this. Being a pastor was not my plan. It was not my plan. It was never my plan. It, if it is still my plan, I will resign tomorrow. It's not my plan. It is God's plan. It's God's plan. I love food. I love food. I love food. Living a fasted life is one of the things I have learned to do because of following the will of God. There's a demand of heaven upon your life. There's a desire of God concerning your life. Being in Lagos was not our plan as a family. Lagos. Ah! <laughs> God do. Lorne is such a busy place. Nobody, nobody's in a hurry. Abito say, everybody just calm. If we wake up eight o'clock, they think, why are you waking up that early? Do you understand? It's all everything just. I mean, you, if you are even smelling uh, with the fragrance by six thirty a.m., some people look at you. Ah. But Lagos six thirty people have done full makeup. Full makeup, four a.m. I'm, I'm wondering, ah, are you people okay for? I mean, it's okay to be awake and try to get to work by four. But for them to have done full makeup, what time did they wake up? You know, there are things you normalize in this city that is not normal. Though. It's not. I remember sometimes I, I take my wife, even she knows, she knows, I'm not very comfortable waking up at that time. 
he does something to my sister. But you see, when I'm complaining inside of me, because I won't say it out, inside of me, because you complain out, the person going to work in court, so you won't complain. Inside me, I now see some people on the roadside. They are well dressed, with shoe, high heel. Their face, you will see layers of makeup. I'm thinking, are you people okay? It does not mean they will get home by 6 a.m. Some of them get home 12, 11, and they still wake up. Is against scriptures. <laughs> Bible says to, 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 to sleep late and to rise up early and eat the food of sorrow, it is not good. Bible. I live my life by Bible. The Bible. If you are living like that, begin to tell yourself it is not good. So that scripture will become alive in your life. Whether God will start your own company for you or something, but something will happen. Stop accepting nonsense. Follow divine instructions. God will tell you, start that business. Start selling food. Divine instruction. The power of divine instruction. Life is not supposed to be this tough. Haven't you discovered that if it is this tough, God should have just raptured us. If it is actually a loving God. Then we became born again, we should have just gone to heaven. If they say they have not finished their house, let us all just be staying in a rent house and be rent. We'll just be sharing an apartment together. It's not supposed to be this difficult. The reason it is, is because we are not living according to the plan. The reason many people are dying young and having old age disease is pressure. This generation, when I was growing up, when you have hypertension, the first thing you ask is, how old is he? Because you feel that those diseases are for old age. Diabetes. But folks have diabetes now, 20s. High blood pressure, 20s. Woke up, did not sleep, did not rise up again. What happened? They say high blood pressure killed him. Why would you have high blood pressure in a city? When you have your own house. I, I, I didn't mean you built it. The reason is that you are comparing yourself and there is a lot of pressure and you don't live by the principles of God. Live by the principles of God and your life will become easier. Those who die, they don't bury them with anything. I'm not here to talk to you about life. Let me go back to what it is. I chatted somebody up yesterday and he replied me. And the gist is that the response did not show whether it was sent from an iPhone 14 or from a techno. Actually, the things you really need your phone for are not that expensive. Let me go back to where I am. I'm just trying to say that all these pressures are very not unnecessary. They are very unnecessary. Buy Benz if you can afford it, but if you can't, use your Dazon and Toyota well. Glory be to God. Amen. Toyota is 81. Let's go back to our scriptures. All right, so let me proceed here um, and tell you that if God guides you, then we must ask, how does he do it? God's primary method of guiding his people is to speak to them. Primarily, God speaks to us and leads us by the staff of his word. That's the scriptures. Therefore, you must be a student of the Bible. That's the primary way in which he leads us. Because, you see, there are things that are just going to be interpreted by principle in decision-making. That means it won't be word for word for your situation, but the principles of scriptures will be what will guide you into making that decision. Do you understand that? That that's being instructed of scriptures. The Bible states clearly that God speaks. Read from the Old Testament to the New Testament, you'll find a God who is not dumb, but a God who consistently speaks. He spoke. Spoke to Noah. Genesis chapter 6, from verse 13 to 22. Build me an ark. Gave him the specification for the ark. He spoke to Jacob. Genesis 35 verse 1. 10 to 15, he spoke to him consistently. He spoke to Moses. Exodus chapter 3, God speaks. He spoke to, he spoke to Philip. Acts chapter 8 verse 29. Philip was in a place. He said, go join this chariot. 8 29, book of Acts. God is in the business of speaking. And you see, in Old Testament, he spoke via people. Right? He spoke via people. Even those who said they saw God did not see God. There is a principle there. What they saw was a semblance of God because no one can see God and live. Right? So when Moses, what Moses saw was not really God. 
What Moses saw was a semblance, an image God wanted him to see. Because nobody sees him and remain alive. Listen to this. What they saw was a God speaking to them. And, and that's, I'm going to, that's a message for another day. But I, get that. that it, it spoke to them. And sometimes it spoke to them to prophet. Elisha spoke, gave his word. Ezekiel gave his word. Jeremiah gave his word. Because at that time, the way to God was not still clear and well fully known. So God still spoke to people via intermediaries. Right? So I want to know who to marry. Like your parents do sometimes, they take your name and go to a pastor, a prophet, and say, This is the name. They, they say, he say, I ask him, he said, There are three guesses he's thinking about her. Uh, Shade, um, and then put the name Tina. And then they wrote those names, and then they will take it to a prophet. It was good in the Old Testament to do that. It's no longer good now. Because in the Old Testament, that's the way we were the intermediaries. You spoke to God through us. Amen. Is it a good, even if you sin, I will be the one. I tell people, people don't, I will not wear suits in the Old Testament. Because look at all the sins you people sin. The way I will be killing birds, I will be killing cattle. They all, in fact, they all, I will be killing things. Somebody will bring dove. <coughs> yes. Oh, God, sorry. Oh, yeah, you go. And then another person. And you know, according to your riches. So we will keep, in fact, when we go to ministry school, we will also be trained how to kill animals. So it's, it's ministry school will also be a school of abattoir. How you learn how to kill goats, kill ram, kill oh, doves. This is how you kill doves once. This is how you kill goats. You see, we learn everything. Because at that time, the way was not well known. It was a shadow. But Jesus came. And because he came, Jesus was speaking to his disciples. When they want to know the will of God, they had him. In fact, he told Philip, he told Philip, he said, now you have seen me, you have seen the Father. But you see, imagine Jesus was alive. Because some of us are angry that we are not alive when Jesus was alive. If Jesus were here now, how would you have spoken to him? You, don't, you are not rich. Look at the village you are from. He will be very busy. He will be in one place. If you book an appointment, they will tell you in 2052. That's if you are alive for that time. So Jesus knew that the only way is to convert himself to a spirit. It's called the spirit of Christ. The Holy Ghost. So he left and then he said, I'm going to pray the Father that he will send you a comforter. He who is the spirit of truth. He said, the world will not know him. He said, you will know him because he will dwell in you. He will live in you. So the spirit of Christ is inside of you. Or may I say this way, the spirit of the Christ. Because some people are calling themselves Christ. But there is the Christ, the one who died for our sin. The Savior, the spirit of the Christ is inside of you. Now you have the capacity. Not because he's with you, he cannot be with me. He's with me as much as he's in you. He's in you as much as he's with somebody who just gave his life to Christ yesterday. As he is in the man who has been with Christ 40 years ago. He's in them. The truth of him. The presence of the Savior. Christ in you. The hope of glory, Paul declared. How does this God speak? Five methods by which he speaks to us in this New Testament. Number one, he speaks to us via dreams. Now, let me say this to you, uh, because you see, in the month of August, I'm going to then begin to share with you these methods. I'm going to preach on God speaking via dreams. Because you see, living by dreams is dangerous. Amen. Amen. You didn't like what I said? Because, you see, you, you are, you are a dreamer. <laughs> Every time your dream comes to pass, that's what you say. You have glorified your dream. But living by dream is dangerous. Somebody's not listening to me. Imagine you are supposed to travel and God knows that that car was going to have an accident. And the Lord does not, you have not fine-tuned your hearing. The only way you hear is dream. You, that means you must sleep at that park. Because if you don't speak, sleep at that park, you will not have the dream that you should not go. Very dangerous. In fact, this will shock you. Do you know that after the Holy Ghost has come in the New Testament, after the Holy Ghost has come, in scriptures, nobody was instructed via dreams again after the Holy Ghost has come. Nobody! Go read the Bible. If you find one, I'm going to give you two million dollars. I don't have it, but the day I have it, I'm going to give it to you. Don't take my word for it. Be Berean Christians. Go find it out. Nobody. After Acts chapter 2, nobody what you will therefore find is you will find the word visions, no longer dreams. 
You know, I tell you that you go and test things. Don't read the Bible. It's not, you didn't come, you came after Martin Luther. It was before, they don't have Bible, but you have it, so go read it. So the first one is dreams. But I'm going to share with you what, uh, how you're supposed to interpret dreams in this New Testament. Uh, uh, and then we're going to talk about inner voice. That's how God leads also. Number two. Number three, how does God lead inner witness? That's the voice of the Holy Spirit in the spirit of the believer. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 16, the spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. He only does not bear witness as it concerns salvation. He bears witness concerning many things in your life. And then number five, I'm going to talk to you about vision. Number four, and number five, I'm going to, we're going to speak about prophecy. But I'm just, for the purpose of this sermon, all you need to know for now is that these are the five ways by which God speaks and leads his people. Understand that? And now, as I close today, I want to share with you, how do I activate the power of divine instruction? How do I receive instruction from God? Because that's very important. I, I'll share with you a very simple story. And, and if you're a good believer here, you would have been in that situation before. Where you fasted. So much believing that God will show you concerning a thing or tell you something concerning a thing, and you fasted the three days fasting and prayer, and you had nothing. Do I have witness here? Oh God, I remember one day I needed to hear God concerning relationship. Relationship, glory be to God. Relationship is very important. Glory be to God. Don't let anybody lie to you, it's not important. It's very, very important because you are going to spend your most of your waking life with that person. So if you marry a terror, you are going to be terrorized most of your life. So very important. I went to God. Fasted, prayed. And did not began to tell me about my ministry. Began to show me things about my ministry. I was very angry. This is about love. You are telling me, what is, what is this? I'm, I'm here. We know why we are here. In fact, you see, when I want to go on certain things, I, I will put the agenda. Have you seen when your agenda is not agenda? It's not going to. It's, it's God had his own way. So that you cannot allow some time to come and hear God concerning an issue. Therefore, the Christian experience and the Christian work is a continual and a daily thing. If you are going to hear God and receive divine instructions, I'm going to tell you certain things you must do practically every day. You will be eating pounded yam with soiled pepper, not feeling spiritual, and God will be downloading to you. And the one you are marushi making who you are now far do, and God will be telling you that boy, you need to pray for him. I said, This is not what we are. That, that thing can get you very angry. What are we talking? You see, you, it's not if it is a human being, you will say, What are we saying? What are you saying? That's not why we came. But I found this that to receive instruction from God is about your daily life. Listen to this. Divine guidance only come to those who maintain divine fire. Divine guidance only come to those who maintain divine fire. That means there is fire on your altar. By that fire, I don't mean that you chant. I don't mean that you cry. I mean that there is a constant intimacy with the Savior. I mean you are always in touch with God. If that is at work in your life, divine guidance is sure. God should not speak to you once in a while. He should speak to you daily on, on several occasions. Because he's your lover. How can I claim I love my wife when we have a schedule for speaking? You can't call me at this time. Don't call me. Only seven to eight. Because that's what some of you do. Seven to eight in the evening. Pray at party. So every time you are work, he cannot even see ideas to you. You are too busy, baby. Busy. You're as busy as busy. I just want to say, I'm very hardworking. You are so hardworking, you can't hear God. That's why you are working hard. Make room for Christ. Because when you make room for Christ, you make room for grace. Make room for him. Divine guidance. Maintaining a spirit-filled life is a requirement for his leading guidance and hearing his voice. You don't just stay a little close to him. You stay permanently with him. Sometimes on your system, you see, it's a consciousness of the Savior. Say, Jesus, what should I do now? Holy Spirit, is there something I should know? It, you, you are not, it, does that sound like too much prayer? It doesn't really affect your work. Because listen to this, you can be doing calculus and the Holy Spirit will be telling you something else. Because it's an inner hearing. It is not what you hear now. You can be in a class, lecturer is lecturing, and God is sharing certain things with you. It's just because you are conscious of him. You are conscious of his person. Now, what do you do? 
to do this, to get these things in place. Number one, you've got to pray. You see, maintaining a prayer life is the first basic requirement that every believer who is interested in divine guidance must have. It's like um, a, a, a sine qua non. It's so basic that if you don't have it, you can't get admission. It's like a student who doesn't write jam in Nigeria and wants to be admitted. You don't have the basic. Listen, the basic in this kingdom is prayer. You must live a prayer life. You must have a prayer life. Not a, a dakudaji prayer life. Not the one that is almost dead. Not the one on ICU. You know, there are prayer lives that are on ICU. There are prayer lives that are in emergency room. I'm telling you about consistent prayer life. Somebody say, I pray in tongues. Uh, see, I, I, even if you pray in understanding, let it be consistent. If you pray in tongues, let it be consistent. It is not how long. I also know people in our generation, they do eight hours. And after that, it's only the next month. They do another eight hours. I would rather you do 20, 20 minutes every day than do that. Somebody, I prepare for the journey. Oh, the journey is a daily thing. This is not, it's not, it's not buying fuel in petrol in your car. It's filling up on a daily, regular basis. If you want to hear from God, that's what to do. James chapter 5, verse 16 to 17. The Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. The Amplified said, it makes tremendous power available. For Elias was a man of like passion. And he prayed that it would not pray, rain upon the earth. And it did not rain for three and a half years. Three years and six months, the King James says. Can I take you back to that time when he prayed? Bible says, as he began to pray, he told his servant, he said, go check the cloud. Go check the cloud. He prayed more until the man came after three check-ins and said, I see a small hand in the cloud. I see a small hand. I see a small hand. You see, you will see things when you pray. You will hear things when you pray. It may not be what you want to hear now, but that's why you need to pray. At least you are hearing some things. So that your manual with God is increasing. I am done with people whose encounter with God is in the year 2003. You've had 20 years encounter. That's what you refer to every time. 20 years ago, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, 20 years ago. Oh God, did God die or is he on a sabbatical? You know even in the world of academics, you are not supposed to quote anything that is beyond certain years. Yet people claim and quote things and all their relevance. It's about God 15, 20, 40 years ago. That's an outdated resource in the world of academics. How do you think it is relevant in the spiritual? We've got to learn to daily walk with God. Romans 8, 26 to 27, the Spirit helps us in our infirmity. For we do not know what we should pray for us. We hope for the Spirit helps us. We groanings which cannot be altered. Jesus, Luke 18, 1, said a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. And not to faint. And our tradition says, ought always to pray and not to give up. Pray without ceasing, Paul said, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Direction and guidance come in the place of prayer. Exercise yourself unto godliness. Jude 20. Bible says, build up yourself. Build up yourself on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. The Amplified said, continually to grow more and more like an edifice. Praying in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. Come on, you've got to sometimes uh, just say one hour. They ask you what's your prayer point. I'm just staying with God. Sometimes you just say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. He even comes and asks you, what do you want? I'm just here to just say, I love you. Jesus, on your bed, Jesus, I love you. I tell you consistently, certain times uh, I stay on the bed, no prayer point. I'm just saying, Jesus, I love you. But for some of us, that's not prayer. Because it's not deep. It does not contain mortars. And the mortars and the ancient world and realms. And the mysteries of the ancient kingdoms. Come on. God was not in the thunder. Is thunder not important? God was not in the fire. Fire is important. The Bible says he was in the still small voice. Number two, you have to study. Paul was writing to Timothy. Study to show yourself approved. A workman that needs not be ashamed. Rightly dividing 
the word of truth. Give me Colossians chapter 3 and then verse 16. Bible says something here that is very important. And therefore, if you are a worshiper, you will always hear from God. If you are not hearing from God, there are information stored in your spirit, man, you are not assessing it. The Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in you. How? Speak to me. I can't hear you. Richly. Richly. What does richly mean? Abundantly. Uh, more than enough. Is that not what they say? Is that? He has a configuration in the Greek that is called pleres, which means plentifully. Let it, let it dwell in you more than necessary. So eat, eat, eat for the journey is far. How do you eat? The word. I found your word and I did eat them. I believe 15, 16, Jeremiah. And your word was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. I found your word. When you see an opportunity to read the Bible, you should be rejoicing because that's the word. Many people cannot tell how God speaks or when God speaks to them because they are not used to the voice of God. One way in which you can be used to God's voice is by being used to the Bible. Because the voice that will speak to you will sound like the voice that you read in scriptures. Take me back to 316 Colossians, man of God. And, and so it's important that you understand that the word of the Lord is your anchor for life. Let the word of Christ. I want you to, do you know how to personalize this? Oh yeah, so read the first half of that statement, personalize it. One, two, three, go. Let dwell in me richly. If I ask you, how does the word dwell in you right now, presently? You know that some people's spirit is kwashiorkor. Some people's spirit is lame. Some people's spirit is in ICU. It's intensive care. That's what ICU means. <laughs> they are really pumping you because that's what that you have. I mean, sometimes I ask people, how many it is written do you know? Jesus responded with his written. Is that not so? That's our example. The devil came at him, said it is written. The devil came at him, he said it is written. Because what was, I, said, I asked people, first, first, first temptation of the devil, what was it? He said, turn stone to bread. I said, what did Jesus say? And they say, he said, man shall not. I said, that's not what he said. The word he said is, it is written. It is written. It is written. That is the power. It is written. Now, how many it is written do you have for life situations? For delay? For the devil's attack? For stagnation? For wickedness? For promotion? For husband? For job? <laughs> you can see that the word is not dwelling in you richly. You cannot, you see, the spiritual does not work with red and yellow capsule. You know, when we are growing up, anything that's wrong with you, they just give you red and yellow capsule. <laughs> or, have you entered Molue in Lagos, those days of Molue? There's something they used to sell inside one jar. Black, like, is they call it Akorue Kwa Jebu. It is, uh, if, if you don't know what that means, uh, God bless you if you don't know what it means. Uh, it actually means that thing cures everything. It's, it's like a miracle bottle. It's every, if I, when they sell it, they say everything. If you have diarrhea, if you have headache, if you have this is it. This is it. This is it. Do you know that's how some of us are when it comes to spirituals? That's what how some of us are. Is John three sixteen you want to use for marriage? Because that's the only thing you know. Is John three sixteen you want to use for? You have used it for salvation, but that's what you use for finances too. That's what you want to use. That's the, that's the only thing you know. If I want to now help you, they'll say Genesis 1 1. In the beginning was the word. How does that create the future you need? In the beginning was the word, and what was it God? Oh Lord, let my wife come. In the beginning was the word. The word. Oh, yeah, where's the wife? No, that is not specific. It's not red and yellow capsule. You are not making sales. What scripture would you use? Oh Lord, you can't say you can't love, don't love me now. So you have turned John 3. That's, it's a shame. Jesus had, it is written for everything the devil threw at him. He added, it is written. Whatever the world will throw at you, the devil throws at you, do you have and it is written. People are depressed in our world because they don't have it is written. If you have a, it is written for every situation, when they tell you it is gone, it is done. Say, God is not over with me. He can't be done with me. 
I know the thoughts I have towards you, see, the Lord, they are thought of good and all of evil to take me to an expected end. This is not the end I expected. It cannot be the end. A scripture for every situation. Living by the word. That's how to hear God. As I read the scriptures, the Lord speaks to me. Yesterday, as I stayed in worship, he told me about the man of God. I chatted him. I said, the Lord said, it is done. That stop troubling yourself. Focus on Jesus. is done. He said, amen. I believe it. That's a pastor. He was going through life. Let me say this to you. The nomenclature does not guarantee life will not test you. What guarantees that you will stand is Jesus. It is written. Look at what he said. He said, teaching and admonishing one another. In what? In Psalms in hymns and spiritual songs. Did you see David O'Dear? Answer me! Look at that. In spiritual song, singing with grace in your heart. For yes, you are the Lord most high. Yes, you are the Lord most for Jacob's world will never do. I will draw from you. This old world will never do. I will draw from you. You can't stay like that. One hour. Lock the door. Put your phone in the other room. And you won't hear something after three days of doing this consistently. It's not difficult to hear from God. It is that you are too busy. You are always in a hurry. Worshipping. I'll stay there. Three hours, I stay there. I just stay. Somebody says, because you are not doing anything. Whoa. <laughs> My friend. <laughs> Sometimes it's one o'clock. I stay there till three. I stay there till four. Today is the, only, the first time I will come to church and I have slept for four hours. Today is the first time in maybe five months. I stay there so that I will not just speak empty words. So that when you practice the word, something will back it up. So that as I begin to run around my house, because I do, that's where I pray. Lord, you will bless them. And some people, you will bless them. As they go out, financial blessings. Marco, and I'm, and I'm, even the slippers, the thing is going down. <laughs> as I'm walking the towels, sometimes the Lord is saying, this is what you should tell them. Let me say this to you. Every song I sing here, I've had it before. Do you know why I heard it? Why I was praising him? The problem with believers is that we are not worshipping God. Change your playlist and you will hear God. What did I say? No, tell, tell your neighbor. Advise them. Are you afraid? Advise them. <laughs> you know, people don't, people, some of us are very, when it comes to those things, we don't want to hear. We don't want to hear it. We don't understand that songs, songs are very spiritual. You see, wh when you understand that songs are very spiritual, it will change your life. It was Elijah that they wanted to prophesy. And you know what they said to Elijah? Elijah said, I am old. I'm an old prophet. He said, get me a musician and let him play. And as he played the music, prophecy came. Prophecy came! Why? Because a man prophesied. Study. Don't stop looking at the word. Life is in the word. In truth, most of the guidance you will ever need is in the word. The more of the word you have, the more of direction you will have. Psalm 103 verse 7. Have you read it before? 103... He said, he sent forth his word. And his word delivered them. So deliverance is in the sent word. Glory be to God. The way you people are doing in this church, I think I'll be wearing polo to church and preach. Because <laughs> now I'm very hot. Glory to God. All right. Colossians 3 verse 16. Psalms and songs. Make melody in your heart. I think I've spoken about that. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Ephesians 5, 19, Paul said it again to the Christians at Ephesus. He says, speaking to yourselves, how? In Psalms, 
aims and spiritual sons. We talk too much. When we gather together as a people, you know what we're supposed to be doing? Worshipping him. But you know what we do when we gather together? Do you know that Manchester United have bought that player? Ah! Next season is going to be great. Oh, they talk about food. Or they talk about trending things on Instagram. 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 And influencers. Do you know that that girl finished all her money? That they used, they wanted to use to help her. She finished it. You know the girl I'm talking about. That's not revelation. You know it. That's what we talk about. But see what they did in the early church. When they came together, they speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. That's why there are so many breaking out of miracles amongst them. I'm looking for a time where somebody wants to do a birthday and say, Sir, where can we get a studio? It's my birthday. I just want the people to just go and worship. Sir, will you come we'll just share the word or lay hands? That's what they used to do those days. That's what they used to do. But you know, you can't even invite me to your birthday. No, no, it's implicating. You can't invite me. You can't. Because the kind of song and the kind of dressing, it will send out the spirit outside of everyone. You see? That's how far we are. That's why when we say we don't see our signs, that's it. There are services that we have. This service can end now if we take some people's phone and start playing music. No! Look at what they did. The Bible says to one another in Psalms and hymns. Have the cross, have the cross. When I foresaw the light, I'm just greeting you. Delight, ah, the cross, ah, the cross. When I foresaw the light, and you just respond. I respond to me and say, On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. That's singing spiritual songs. Some people don't even know many spiritual songs. I don't know. Some people have blocked me because of the kind of songs they post. They have blocked me. What is it? We are not angry. We are just telling them. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You can't want signs on Sunday. When throughout the week, the, the song we listen to are terrible songs. You now say it's the choir. It's not the choir. It is you. It is you. It is you. No, it is you, sir. No, my, I, I was talking to you too. You too. Someone say, you have me in mind. Yes, I was having you in mind. The spirit was telling me you have a problem. No, it's personal. Look at the songs. There's one they call Kenny can I will not mention it. The, the song looked like them all. The way she acted was like them. But you people love it. Then you want to also let us lay hands so the spirit will move. How can we do these things? How? You are not even jealous for Jesus. If you are jealous for Jesus, you will keep the hair waves completely for him. Before you said it was because there's no Afro. There's no Afro fusion in gospel. What's Gaze Baba doing food for you now? But people don't like it again. If they, they say the truth, it's because you have not left the word. The word, carnality and the flesh is still speaking to you. You are still doing sabbatical with the devil. That's why when you want to play the keyboard and the jazz, you are playing something like you heard from them and you are mixing it together. The whole thing looks like a mother that's not properly sieved. Have you eaten that kind of amala before? Praise God. Finally, three things that are important on divine instruction. Number one, God will lead his people, but he will determine the method by which he will communicate his will to them. So you can't say God is through dream, is through dream, is through dream, or you say I must hear a voice. Speak it to me in the English language. I must hear. No, you can't determine. He chooses which way. We should only trust him for leading and let him determine. Number two, if God does not communicate with you any other way, stick to the word of God for divine guidance. Do you understand that? I've seen people who have become demonized because they wanted to hear a voice. They were looking for a voice that would speak vocally and they, become, they became very demonized. People now call them bipolar or some things. They were the one chasing devils. They wanted, say, holy God, I must hear a voice. My pastor had a voice. Don't have what I had. 
Stay with how God leads you. We are different people. Do you understand what I'm saying? Speak to me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Number three, when a child of God seeks to know the voice of God, God will lead that person to his perfect will. When you seek to know the will of God, it will always lead you. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Stand on your feet. Let's go. Have I helped you? Don't worry. I, I did not tell you how to dream. And I did not tell you how to hear from inner witnesses. We are going to take this series and break it down next month. Don't miss service next month. Understand that? Next week we are going to be sharing when Jesus used your boat. Glory be to God. When Jesus used your boat. That's what we are going to be talking about next week. And then we will now go back to the word of God upper week. And we'll begin to see how God leads us. Are you excited about leading of God? All right. Close your eyes, everyone. Under the sound of my voice. And I want you to just begin to say, Lord, lead me. Lord, lead me. Now, if there are people here, you have never had God. All eyes closed. Nobody looking around. And you want to hear God better. You, you know it like you know your name. That see, I, sometimes I think I had him, but I'm not sure. I don't have clarity. First, let's do it this way. Can you just throw your hand up and say, God, speak to me? Throw your hand up and say, Lord, I want to be instructed by you. I want to be clearly led of God. Safety is only in divine instructions. Safety. Safety is only there when God leads you. Paul was on his way to Asia with his team. The Bible said the Spirit forbade them from entering. The Spirit forbade them. And the Bible said, and they slept, and he had a vision of a man of Macedonia saying, come to Macedonia and help us. And they woke up, and they heard, and they thought that was the Lord leading them to Macedonia. Divine instruction, divine guidance. In the whole Testament, in the New Testament, is a sign of God upon a life. Lord, let this signature also be seen in my life. The signature of divine guidance. The signature of divine leading. I will not go by myself. I will not go by my way. The signature of divine leading. Is that your prayer? Is that your prayer? That you will be led of God. That you will be led of God. You will be led of God. You will be 